Hi, this is your host Sapnim Bharatia and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Richard Tubb, IT business growth expert. Richard, it's great to have you on the show. Nice to be here. Thanks for taking the time to speak with me. No, it's, it's my pleasure. And today we're going to talk about an ebook that you wrote for Linode, the MSP's Guide to Modern Cloud Infrastructure. So it's very important for, for our audience to actually also understand the author of the book. So tell us a bit about your own background and you know uh, your own evolution and you know your position to actually guide people to help in building a scalable managed services uh, service provider business yeah sure thanks for asking so my background i actually used to run a managed service provider business uh, based here in the uk uh, i built that business up from a one man band basically crawling under desks and fitting ethernet cables and fixing pcs for people uh, I grew that business uh, to the point where I sold it at, uh, I think, at the end of 2011 now, so uh, quite quite a while ago. But since that time, what I've been doing is, in a nutshell, uh, helping other IT business owners to avoid the mistakes that I made. And let me tell you, there were many, many mistakes along the way, so there was a lot of uh, experience to share there. So I write books, as we're talking about today, run a blog, podcast for managed service business owners, basically to help them to free up their time, concentrate on what's important, and essentially, let's be honest here, to make more money. If you look at today's modern world, is more or less a cloud-driven world. Of course, on-premise, there, is, there will always be hybrid, uh, multi-cloud world. But who would you define as managed service providers in this modern cloud-centric world? That's a great question. I think the world that I came from, sort of where we talked about MSPs, it was typically in the IT support arena. So my my MSP, for instance, provided support, outsourced IT support for small businesses here in the UK. And many of the MSPs that I speak to follow that sort of uh, uh, mode of operation where they provide a flat fee outsourced IT support service to small businesses. However, let's be honest about things. When we talk about managed services, the managed service model can be applied to pretty much any type of business uh, out there. What the uh, the real benefit to uh, end users, to small businesses, businesses of any size to manage services is they get to budget for their IT, they get proactive uh, support. So that's that's really, you know, the grassroots to it. Um, my MSP focused on small business IT support, but there's so many different types of MSPs out there nowadays. One more thing that's changing is that in modern world, every company you have to be a software company uh, without a software strategy in place, you will not survive. If you look at the evolution since your early days where folks, uh, you know, they had to have, you know, they were getting started with digital transformation today, you have to have a cloud strategy in place, which also means that the way they are, their, their teams are writing application, deploying application, managing them and scaling them is also changing. So do you also see that the advice that you give today is different from that you used to give in early days when you started your own business? Uh, that's a wonderful question. I would say fundamentally, the technology has changed, but the advice remains fundamentally the same. You know, if we rewind to March 2020, uh, we refer to it now as the great working from home rush. Every MSP in the world got phone calls, got text messages, got emails from their clients saying, hey, can you set us up with the cloud? Can you turn that switch and move us onto the cloud? And of course, I'm being facetious about this, but, you know, everybody needed, wanted, had to move through working from home and working remotely. Now, that's a double-edged sword for managed service providers for IT companies because so many people watching this video who run an MSP for years they will have been speaking to their clients and saying, hey, let's move you across to the cloud because it enables you to do things faster, better and cheaper. And clients have been like, yeah, okay, yeah, we may, we may think about that in the future. Come March 2020, wow, the entire world decided that they had to move across. So I think if you run a small business nowadays, any business at all, just as you were saying, whether you're a grocery store, anything else, you run a technology business because every business needs technology to, to function nowadays. There's, there's very few uh, exceptions to that rule. So when I say it was a double-edged sword for managed service providers, the, the early months of COVID were very, very stressful for MSPs. I had MSPs speaking to me who said they'd got clients working from home. 
uh, and there was a, a lack of equipment, and they were getting phone calls saying, hey, can you get this old Windows 95 laptop working uh, for us? And they're like, what are we supposed to do here? But they were key workers. They helped the small businesses get up and running during COVID. And now, of course, the majority of businesses look at technology as being something that they have to use, that they want to use, because it gives them a competitive advantage. The same way that you were saying about your local uh, grocery store there, they were forced to make that move. I think, broadly speaking, if there's anything good come out of COVID, it's that the majority of businesses now see technology as a business enabler rather than just a necessary evil. So well said. One thing that I was like when I was listening to you and you're talking about, you know, that from the technology point of view, uh, not much has changed. One thing that has changed, uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure that you'll fully agree with you, is security. In the early days, security was always an afterthought. It was someone else's problem. Also, the fact was that you were running a monolith that was coming from one vendor, which was also proprietary. Now folks are using open source technologies. And if you're an app developer, you are using different projects, different frameworks, different you know repositories uh, on GitHub. So supply chain becomes a big issue also. So uh, uh, when you talk to businesses, how much discussion is there around you know uh, security when it comes to managed service providers? Because uh, the fact is that a lot of people think that when you move, move to a managed service providers, it's a magical place, it's a magician which takes care of all your problems. But that is not hundred percent true. Definitely, you know, you hit the nail on the head there. And if I rewind a little bit, you know, I sold my MSP business twelve years ago. When I was running that MSP business, you know, we talked about cybersecurity, of course, but we talked about things like antivirus and firewalls, and of course, those are still there now. But they're a given; they're an accepted standard. Fast forward to the modern day, however, the the you know the cybersecurity. Uh, the the vectors that are open, the challenges that MSPs have to deal with, they're huge. They're absolutely huge, you know. And we go into this a little bit in the ebook. The idea that no MSP can be all things to all people, you know. With the best will in the world, you need to have partners who can help you to provide the security to your clients because things are moving so quickly, and the bad guys, unfortunately, are moving quickest of all. So MSPs cannot do it alone. They need help. Now, I think it's. Super Super important as well that uh, to note that the perspective of cybersecurity has changed over the past few years. So I mentioned COVID, for instance, changing the idea of what computers are, what te technology is to small businesses. I think it's a slower progress for end users to become aware of cybersecurity, but they are getting there because barely a day goes by where you don't see, you know, a BBC News tech story or CNN or whoever it might be highlighting a cybersecurity breach. And I think the other thing that COVID has, has, has really shown is that the bad guys, cyber criminals, they are not just targeting big companies. You know, we are seeing, I speak to MSPs all over the world every day of all shapes and sizes, and their clients, small businesses, solopreneurs, uh, charities, nothing is immune to ransomware, to these cyber thieves. If you've got money, Cyber criminals are interested in coming after you. So again, end users uh, are starting to become wise to this and looking to their MSPs uh, for more advice and guidance. The onus, of course, is on MSPs at the moment. They have got the keys to the kingdom. Think about this. Every MSP has got access to their client systems and they've got you know, if not a dozen or more systems within the client's network. So MSPs are targets now for cyber criminals because if you gain access to the MSP, you gain access to so many other clients as well, which is another reason why MSPs need to take cybersecurity super, super important. Yeah, they are the first and the last line of defense. And when it comes to security, it's not just the bad actors, you know, it's state is sponsored and the incentives are so high. There's a big business and the business is not just around uh, selling the vulnerability, it's also about hiding them, don't tell them so that the, the state is sponsored actors or other bad actors can continue to exploit them for a much longer time. Now, one more thing that comes with all this thing and we need to talk about, this, especially the cloud or managed service provider world is cost. Uh, can you also talk about, uh, first of all, especially in today's world because of the pandemic and potential recession, uh, companies are becoming cost sensitive. So, so talk about, you know, um, uh, 
how much you know medical service providers you know care about it and what they can do or they are doing to make you know cost you know it's more cost efficient yeah so as you say you know we're looking the the downside to covid and the economic uh, recession that many countries are facing at the moment is that uh, clients are looking at the cost of their it and basically they want to do more for less you know ever that has been the case though you know i remember going back so many uh, uh, years that uh, msps have always faced this challenge so i'm going to throw out there i think one of the fundamental tenants for managed service providers is to lower their cost of support and to increase their profits. What do I mean by that? Well, so many MSPs take on tools, they use uh, solutions and services that might have a low headline cost. So it might be cheap to buy, but then what they don't realize is it's actually quite expensive to support on an ongoing basis. Um, and so we we highlight this in the ebook that Lenoid and I put together that you know the alternative cloud marketplace is really interesting because the relationship that you can have with an alternative cloud provider is really tight. Now, I can tell you having run an MSP business, when you work with a vendor who really cares about your business, who has great support, who really understands their product, you save money because you don't have to go through different layers of support to get answers. You don't have to speak to one of a thousand help desk engineers, you know, who don't understand your businesses. You're speaking to somebody in a business that you partner with. And so one of the biggest uh, benefits coming from the alternative cloud uh, uh, marketplace is that MSPs can have much tighter relationships with their vendor partners. And what that means is they can lower their cost of supporting the solution. And of course, that means increased profits as well. Once you've got money, then you know things become possible. Now, uh, we have kind of laid the foundation of MSP's uh, you know, space. Now I want to talk about this ebook in, in particular. First of all, what was the goal behind writing this book, ebook? Yeah, so Linode approached me, and again, you very kindly earlier on said I was the author of the ebook. I'll, I'll, I'll take a little bit of credit there, but a lot of credit has got to go to the team at Linode. You know, they did an incredible amount of research here. Uh, they've done an incredible job of promoting the book and making uh, all of that information look great. So um, my role within the book was to provide, you know, a former MSP and a, a current MSP experts um, uh, insight into what's happening in the marketplace. But the goal of the book really was, you know, I, I've just mentioned that phrase, alternative cloud. Many MSPs are not even aware of what that phrase means or what that is. You know, research within the book that Linode uh, uncovered is that, you know, more than 30% of current cloud spending goes to alternative cloud uh, providers. Yet in my experience, I speak to hundreds, if not thousands of MSPs every single year. Very few of them are aware of what the alternative cloud is or the opportunities that it brings. Now, most of us are familiar with, you know, Google, uh, Microsoft, Amazon, uh, the big three services. But there, if you're new to the alternative cloud, there's a whole marketplace out there of providers who are top quality and provide things at lower cost and better. It basically enables to do things better, faster, and cheaper than the big three. And so in answer to your question, this ebook was really our way of shining a light on this huge opportunity for MSPs. I want MSPs to be aware that the big three are not the be all and end all, that there are alternative cloud providers out there, such as Linode, who can just do an incredible job of helping MSPs to grow their business. So I hope the ebook. Uh, uh, does go some way to shining a light on this a huge opportunity for MSPs. Can you talk about some of the benefits that are there for using alternative cloud providers? Linode is there, DigitalOcean, a lot of other players are there in comparison to those big three players that you mentioned earlier? So, you know, I've already touched upon one of them, haven't I, where that's the reduced cost of support. So again, for me as a managed service provider historically, and what I teach managed service providers now, the fundamental tenet of managed services is look to lower your cost of support, which increases your profits. What, you know, the statistics show this, working with an alternative cloud provider provides such a strong relationship there. It enables you to speak to engineers who are highly skilled. It enables you, for anybody watching this, for instance, who perhaps 
doesn't have much in the way of cloud services at the moment and doesn't know where to start, well, I would encourage you to speak to an alternative cloud provider because they can hold your hand through the opportunities that are available to you. They don't go tend to go into things with a hard sell, neither do they just treat this like a commodity. You know, you just tick a box and buy it and then you're on your own. You know, so for managed service providers who don't have much of a cloud presence at the moment, alternative cloud providers can be that support that they need to not only dip a toe in the water, and, but to get going and to um, have a partner who can help them to scale up. So the, the trust element of that is super, super high. The research shows that as well. The MSPs that I've spoken to who do business with alternative cloud providers rave about the support they get and they rave about the fact that they've got a partner there rather than just a supplier, if that makes sense. And I think the benefit to end users, we already talked about potentially lower costs, not just for the MSP, but for end users as well. Um, but one of the other benefits for end users is that the time to resolve tickets or, you know, if you do have any issues, the time to get them resolved is significantly uh, lower when you're working, when your MSP is working with an alternative cloud provider. What that means is end users, if they do experience problems, they get fixed a lot quicker. What that means for an MSP is the end user is happier because they're experiencing less problems and those that they do get resolved quicker. And what that means for the MSP is the client tends to be stickier, as we say in the industry. So there tends to be less churn of clients who are just moving around from provider to provider. And the, you know, again, it tends to be all about long term relationships. That's what MSPs are looking for. They don't want it to be seen as just a commodity selling services. They want a long term relationship with the clients. And the way they can do that is by building a long term relationship with an alternative cloud provider. Richard, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about not only uh, the ebook that you wrote for Linode, but also share your insights about your own experience uh, that come from the MSP's business and how, how not only MSPs, but also customers can benefit from those insights. So thanks for sharing all those insights and I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me.